But this particular moment that I'm in is not the result of me choosing anything but to stay close. That's it. It's like, it's like there's one gauge, one idiot light on my dashboard. <laughs> it's, it's the value of the presence. That's the only thing that's there. All the other stuff is important. But the one thing, I've just got my eyes on this one thing, is to live daily in constant, as much as I know, know how, constant rela- realization of the presence of the Spirit of God because He's taking me, He's taking me into His seasons. <clears throat> this season that, you know, that I've been in for a, a little while now um, I, I like to talk about it just occasionally so that you understand what's going on here. And, and uh, I, my, my season of mourning is no longer a season of mourning. It's, it's just moments of mourning, moments of grief. It's, you don't get to direct your seasons. You don't, you don't get to say, well, okay, I've, I've done this long enough. It doesn't work that way. But when you follow him, you find yourself into places in God you couldn't have earned. Yeah. You, you couldn't have worked it up. You couldn't, have, you couldn't have somehow claimed or declared your way into it because it just doesn't work that way. These, these seasons are relational. He, he, he brings us into seasons, into moments, into atmospheres where, where it's, it's only by following him that we find ourselves there. You, you know, Jesus says he was baptized in water. He came out, the Spirit of God came upon him. The Holy Spirit led him into the wilderness. Yeah. If the Holy Spirit leads you into the wilderness, it's because you've been set up for tremendous victory. He doesn't lead us into into situations to be defeated. He leads us into situations to defeat the enemy in his in his name. That's that's the design of things. And sometimes, you know, in, in this particular season, for me, I. I, uh, I, I find myself uh, surprised, surprised by how happy I am in my heart. And, and knowing that I, I know, thanks, I, I, I know what it is to choose joy. I get that. I mean, it's been a lifestyle. I've tried, you know, the best I know how to rejoice before the Lord. And I, and I, get, and I believe that strongly. But this particular moment that I'm in is not the result of me choosing anything but to stay close. That's it. It's like, it's like there's one gauge, one idiot light on my dashboard. <laughs> it's, it's the value of the presence. That's the only thing that's there. All the other stuff is important. But the one thing, I've just got my eyes on this one thing, is to live daily in constant, as much as I know, know how constant rela- realization of the presence of the Spirit of God because he's taking me, he's taking me into his seasons. Yeah. And it's just different. It's just different. I, I'm so surprised by what I see him doing. Surprised. And thankful. There's another passage, though, that I would hold in contrast to this. When I've, you know, I'm, I'm asked a lot of wonderful friends around the world want to know how I'm doing, and that's good, and, and you the same. And and I, I I don't mind talking about anything at any time, so I, I I don't hold anything back. But I also don't broadcast. But there's this passage uh, when the Lord spoke for Israel. He said. Uh, let every man gather men according to each one's need, and for one person, according to the number of persons in your tent. Then it says, when they measured it by omers, whatever an omer is. I know Barry Bonds had a lot of omers, but uh, you know, I'm just feeling really pitiful today. I just, I think, I think there's a certain. I, I don't know if I need coffee or if I've had too much. I'm not sure what it is. He who gathered, listen to this verse, he who gathered much had nothing left over. He who gathered little had no lack. 
So the whole deal was for six days of the week, every morning, they got up and they, they picked the manna up off the ground for their family. And they couldn't keep it. They couldn't get enough for tomorrow, too. They had to go enough for just today. And then tomorrow they had to regather. Except the day before the Sabbath, they could pick two days worth because they weren't supposed to pick it up on the Sabbath. So yeah. the Lord did this supernatural uh, sustaining uh, thing with the manna where it wouldn't get worms and stuff the second day if it was for the Sabbath. So it's just, just a bizarre story. But the point was, is the manna story is enough for each day, and that's all. Elijah's story was enough for 40 days. And if you don't recognize the season that you're in, the moment that you're in, yeah. Yeah, that's good, Bill. you'll either try to gather so much that turns to worms. Yeah. It's kind of a weird illustration, but just work with me here. <laughs> just pretend like you understand. <laughs> or... You, you miss your moment where the Lord speaks so profoundly to you that he's actually creating a momentum that will take weeks, maybe months to unravel. Yeah. And I don't know, be honest with you, I don't look at where I'm at and evaluate my season. I, I don't, because I'm not, I'm, I'm not trying to be humble. I'm just not smart enough. I don't get it. I don't get it. What I do get is I get his mood. I pick up on his mood. I pick up on what he's thinking and I can recognize his presence. And if I've got that, afterwards I can look back and describe the season to you. Yeah. But when I'm in it, not so much, at least for me. You, you, may, you may get it, but I, I, I don't, I don't. But when it's over, I can look back and say, oh, that was a season of, and describe yeah, yeah, yeah. it. Yeah. But here, here's the thing to remember. If you define your seasons by your problem, you've already lost. Yeah. The season is never about your problem. The season is always about the solution you're going to discover. Yeah. It's always about that additional step of expanding the kingdom, L letting Jesus be more magnified, more exalted, more, um, more illustrated, manifest in a given situation. And that's our life. Our life, we go literally from glory to glory. We go from one place of illustrating Jesus to another. Yeah, I'm so glad that you uh, watched this video. I do pray that it's a great, great strength and encouragement to you. And I've got a verse that really is my cry for all of us. And it's uh, Psalms 20, it's verse 4. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill all your plans. That's my prayer. That's my prayer is that this would be the season of rich, rich fulfillment. Thanks for joining us.